Okay, welcome to our online live session of the Master of International Cooperation Sustainable Emergency Architecture at the International University of Catalonia in Barcelona. Um, we are going to explain our program through a PowerPoint presentation that you will be uh, watching. And then uh, we're going to answer questions through um, the live chat of the master. Uh, my name is Carmen Mendoza. I'm the co-director of the masters. Um, I'm an architect and I have a PhD in urban design and planning and I have worked many years now in urban upgrading. Uh, next to me is Raquel Colasios, whom will present herself uh, now. So um, if you have any questions, remember that you can, at the end of the session we'll be answering them. So just keep online and welcome to all of you. Hello, I'm Raquel Colacios. I'm the coordinator of the program and I'm an architect. Um, uh, the master we are presenting today, it's part of the School of Architecture of the International University of Catalonia. Uh, it's a private university located in the city of Barcelona. Um, I think you, most of you may know how great is uh, Barcelona to live in, so um, I think it's one of the assets of the program also. Um, uh, in our university, although the master course has its own room, uh, once you are here, you will be able to use all the facilities um, of the School of Architecture, such as the library, the model lab, also to attend open lectures that the school organizes and other activities which are part of the of this faculty. Uh, now I would like you to introduce you. The, I would like to introduce you the the team of the of the master course. As you see, we are a woman team. Uh, well, Carmen Mendoza, the co-director of the program. Uh, then Sandra Bestraten, she's the co-director. She's uh, an architect and she's the founder of um, an NGO called University Without Borders. Uh, then it's me again. Uh, then we have Alison Kortniff. Uh, she's uh, the assistant coordinator. Um, she's an alumni of the program and an environmental designer. And finally we have Ana Cañizares, uh, who is the communications officer and she is uh, right now uh, in the live chat, uh, managing the live chat of this session. She's an editor as well, uh, and well, basically we are the main team of this, of this, uh, the staff of this program. Okay, so we wanted to, through this session, explain a little bit about our program, basically the content. Where, what are we teaching? Who are we teaching for? Um, basically, uh, the big umbrella we're under is international cooperation because this is what you're going to under learn about. How does international cooperation work? What are the entities involved? The complex situations you're going to face? And in, under this umbrella, we work on human settlements and architecture. And human settlements, um, uh, we are looking at the urban scale of emergency architecture, the urban scale of urban development. And at the same time, we're talking about architecture in both these contexts. Um, basically, you will, we are teaching people from the built environment, but most of your teachers will not be of the built environment. We're teaching architects to really have a different view of the career because it's the only way to face these complex um, situations. So basically, um, as I was saying in this previous slide, uh, the master's has like two big parts in it. The first one is everything that is related to emergency architecture and this other part of the, of the course, and it can be divided in time too. The first months and the last months of the program are more of urban development. So when we're looking at emergency architecture, and many of you may not know what we're talking about, we're talking about architecture and settlements in post-disaster situations, and at the same time in post-conflict situations. Uh, and we're talking of teaching strategies, which are very linked to these topics. Strategies um, when we're talking about post-disaster of reconstruction, also relocation. Uh, we're questioning what is happening now and all the manuals through the NGOs that we're working with also. And at the same time, we're since it's an architecture school, um, we won't be teaching to design, but we will be giving alternatives to how to build shelter with low technology and in situations of crisis. So this is like the first part of the content of the program, and there you're going to be having many courses related to these topics, and we're going to further on explain the methodology. And the second part of social-spatial strategies, we are trying to encourage the 
schism of the social and the spatial in architecture and urbanism. Uh, we are introducing you to new topics with a lot of fields of research like environmental justice. So all this is uh, the philosophy of the program, which is really looking to look for new tools, do look for new methodologies, um, understanding that the elements of the city are different when you're in these contexts, understanding that we cannot continue doing traditional planning in contexts of um, uh, poverty, of, of conflict, of refugee situations, of um, post-disaster, etc. So basically, in a nutshell, this is the two main parts of the program. And um, what do we, how do we teach this, or what is, what are we, um, how are we looking at these fields? In the first place, we're very interdisciplinary, I would say, as I was saying. Um, we are tailoring to modify and to help people that are from the built environment to work in these contexts, but your teachers will be of different um, disciplines. Um, we are looking at, as I was saying, through a social perspective too, even though we're a built environment school. Um, we definitely believe that in these contexts we have to be thinking of both scales of intervention. It cannot just be the building and the shelter and the architecture. It has to be the community, the, the urban scale has to be present. That's why we're talking about shelter and settlements. Um, same thing in camp design and refugee situations, looking for alternatives for refugee integrations. It has to be at an urban scale. Therefore, it's very context-based. All the content here is, is related to context and culture. And at the end of the day, we really believe in social empowerment. I was saying that it is not just, um, it, it must be very bottom-up. It must be very much linked to community um, design, uh, participation. These are all aspects in our program that um, is, at the end of the day, is going to build a new view of all these, of how to work in these contexts. Okay, and to be able to get uh, all this content and knowledge, uh, we combine uh, different methodologies. Uh, we combine theoretical classes with uh, practical hands-on uh, activities. Also with workshop uh, format uh, classes in which uh, we emphasize uh, group work. Uh, we have, for example, uh, a, a local workshop which, in which we work in a, in a neighborhood here in Barcelona. And then we also have an international workshop, which is the field trip that we will explain further on. And at the end, also all through the program, we teach uh, research skills in a very one-to-one -one basis, uh, together with your supervisor, supervisor of the thesis. So the main structure of the master course, uh, it is divided into four main blocks. Uh, the first one is uh, called criteria. Second one is the thesis, the development of the thesis. The third one is the field trip and at the end the internship period. And the criteria uh, part is divided into three modules. As you can see we have first module, it's emergency shelter and settlements. Uh, this first module is formed by different courses, weekly courses. And in fact uh, inside this module we have a, a course which is certified by International Federation Red Cross. Uh, which is one of our partners. It means that at the end of the master, uh, you will get also a certificate uh, um, signed together with International Federation Red Cross. Uh, then we have the second module, which is uh, more related to sustainable urban development, but also it's combining um, emergency. The first one, it's um, basically uh, dedicated to emergency. The second one is combining both. Um, in which we will have different uh, workshops and courses with different professors coming from all around. And then module three, it's uh, about strategies to implement in the two different uh, contexts we were uh, talking before. Uh, it's important to, for you to know that the weekly schedule of this first module, uh, it's uh, from Monday to Thursday from 10 in the morning to five in the afternoon and Fridays are dedicated to thesis development. This first part criteria uh, goes from the end of September to um, end of February. 
Um, and as Raquel was saying, the first module, the, these three modules make up criteria, which are at the end um, a, a big part of the theory workshop-based methodology. In parallel, from October to May, um, you will be working on your thesis. Um, this is an academic master's program, which means that the thesis is a written academic thesis on the topics related to the research lines that we're developing in the program and at the university. And uh, what is this? This entitles you, when you're finished with the 60 credits of the course, of the master's course, that you can go on to a PhD. So um, we will be teaching you how to write a research paper. Um, you will have a course from October to May, which is going to help you with the skills and how to reference and how to write and a whole argumentation from, um, from a, of a research paper. You will have regular supervisions. We have maximum three students per supervisor. All the supervisors are PhDs and with a long, long academic track. And uh, this picture you're seeing is of the jury, the day of the jury in which we invite usually a very relevant scholar, um, professor, academic, or from practitioner um, to be part of the jury. So you have an oral presentation. Um, the topics, as I was saying, um, we are discussed, we discuss with the students in the first weeks of the course. Some students come with a topic already that they want to work on, and, and we try to uh, fit the supervisor to the topic. So a person that has a lot of um, experience in this field. Um, Raquel was mentioning also that um, along with the theoretical um, courses, we also think that practice is one of the main issues when we're talking about working in context of post-disaster and post-conflict and development. So uh, as part of our core course, we incorporate a field trip. Um, the field trip is 10 days that we go and we work in a real project that is always linked to a local university and to um, local communities and also the public administration many times. Um, in this work field trip, which is 10 days, as we were saying, usually end of January, February, March, um, is included in, tu in your tuition. This is important because we see it as a very, very important part of how to learn to work. So you'll be putting in practice much of the theory or the participation tools that you've been learning through the course and we usually go to different parts of the world, but this year's we've been focusing on Latin America. Uh, we've been to Medellin, we've been to Rio de Janeiro, worked in a favela there, in a, in a comuna in Medellin. Um, last year we went to India, but it was more a different kind of, of workshop where we were learning also skills in uh, low technology construction. And this year we'll see, it'll be a surprise, but it'll probably be in, in uh, South America. So yes, this is a very important part of also of, of the learning experience in our program. We team up sometimes with also foreign universities in this field trip. Uh, two years we joined the, the Latin American lab of Columbia University, New York, and uh, also the University of San Diego when we went to Tijuana to work on a project there. Uh, sometimes with also architects that have their own studio and that we work with. So it's a very enriching experience um, to travel together and work in a real project in a developing country. And the last part of the, of the master program, it's uh, the internship. Uh, internship is a mandatory part of the program. It, it's, it's a three months internship to be done in June, July and August. Uh, we have agreement with uh, local and international institutions. We have almost 30 agreements, uh, such as some examples are UN Habitat or Spark in India or Doctors Without Borders, uh, UNHCR. Well, we have um, many different kinds of, of institutions uh, like NGOs or national institutions or even small offices. Um, but Although we have all these agreements, students also have the chance to find their, uh, an internship that it's not in the list. So in that case, if any student is finding an internship in a new place, uh, the master will help you with all the paperwork to sign the, the agreement which is necessary for the, for the internship. Then uh, we wanted to, to explain to you about our partners. Uh, as I was saying, uh, we have uh, International Federation Red Cross as one of our partners. 
um, they are uh, validating uh, one of the courses that we give in the master program, uh, which is the uh, human shelter and settlements uh, course. Uh, then we also have UN Habitat as a partner. Uh, they are teaching in the program and also they are providing internships. And as well, RMIT, which is a brand new agreement that we have, um, <clears throat> the, the master in RMIT, it's uh, sharing, we are sharing common interests and objectives uh, together with our master. And in fact, our field trip is uh, an optional uh, course for them in their master in, in Australia. Yeah, I think this is a slide that is um, that sums up a lot of what we are. We're a big team. Um, the faculty of this program is amazing. Um, I'm not because I'm saying it, but I, we get feedback from our students on this. And it's built up of a, of a balance between practitioners, people that are on the field, that are working in NGOs, and know exactly what, we're, what you're going to face when you're working in these contexts. And at the same time, people that are in research and academics that are working on the topics of the masters and creating really interesting debates and a critical view of what's, been do, what's being done. So we have wonderful um, professors. Uh, I would like to stand out that when you finish the program, these people are part of your network and they're in different prestigious universities too. We have professors that have a long, long track behind them and are very well known, like Nabil Hamdi from Oxford Brookes University and the Center for Development Studies that they have there. We have uh, people from the field, as I was saying, the head of UN Habitat Barcelona of the City Resilience Program, Dan Lewis is there. Um, we also have links to local universities too. So it's a big balance of practitioners like Teddy Cruz, which is an architect that works in the Board of Tijuana. And um, we had the field trip with him um, from University College London too. So very prestigious universities in, in Europe and in the US are participating. Um, Professor Sergio Pagliaroni from um, Portland University of the US. So, as I was saying, part of the asset of this program is the great professionals that will be teaching you and that have their own networks and become your networks when you finish the program. And then also part of this uh, big network is the alumni of our, of our master program. Uh, we will be already in the eighth uh, edition next year. So we have uh, quite a network of alumni. We like to keep in touch with them. Uh, they are from all part of all sides of the world, so which we think also it's one of the main assets of the program. You will be uh, in class with international colleagues. Um, some of the, our alumni have, have come uh, after they have finished to teach in our program or to give open lectures. Um, we are always in, in contact with them, so it's also uh, a nice network network to maybe uh, get some internship placements or, or even to think of future career options. Um, at the end, alumni have been uh, going into quite different uh, fields. Uh, many of them are doing their PhD or they are doing uh, different research uh, projects. Others are working in NGOs or they have created their own NGO. Uh, others have gone back to their home countries and they are working in national agencies or international agencies, uh, which is like um, very good news because they are having um, uh, jobs from uh, many different uh, backgrounds. Yeah, and also yeah. if you would like to ask questions to them, there are good um, they, uh, sure. persons to ask. Mm -hmm. And then also in parallel to all the activities that we develop in the master course and they are part of the, of the program, uh, we like also to have parallel activities which are uh, absolutely related with the topics that we are discussing in the program, uh, but we like to open them to the public in general. Uh, so for example, we were having, we will, we were having a series of dialogues at the Roca Gallery, which is a uh, um, gallery in the center of Barcelona. It was open to the public in general. Uh, it was great because we were combining uh, professors of the master which, uh, with uh, guest um, uh, speakers. Then we also have open lectures uh, at the university, but also sometimes we try to have open lectures in places outside the university. 
And then also we're having, uh, for example, two years ago, an exhibition uh, in the CCCB, which is the Center of Cultura uh, uh, Contemporánea de Barcelona. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, and we were exhibiting some students' work. Um, another objective of the master's program is disseminating the work that we're doing. So um, part of the objective is also to publish, and uh, these are two publications that we've done so far. We're pr producing a, a third one in which we include, um, we give the opportunity to our students after they finish their thesis and their research to continue on in writing an article that can be related to, to their thesis and that uh, goes further when they've finished. Um, what's interesting is that since the program is of emergency partly and part of urban development, what's happening is that we're bridging topics that wouldn't be done and they usually worked on separately. So we're really creating arguments um, and new reflections uh, around the topics of the masters. So this is another um, very en enriching experience for alumni of ours and, um, and also the students of the current year to know that their work will be published. Um, we also disseminate through our, um, through our blog. Um, I'd like to say that Ana Cañizares, who is chatting with you as the one in charge of doing this wonderful work through the blog, um, it's part of our strategy of dissemination because we are not just um, talking about our program, but we are also publishing things that are related, topics related to what is going on in the field and also having a space for people to write and comment. Um, we also have our Facebook page, which is very active, and that, that is also a good source of information if you're interested in the topics of sustainable emergency and, um, and also of development. And you can find all the information also of the curriculum and, and the process of admission in the web page of the university, of the, univers of the UIC, the, the International University of Catalonia. So we're really um, disseminating many of our, of our topics and our methodology and everything on, online too. At the end, at the, uh, at the end if you want more information uh, for the about the admissions process, you should contact uh, Rudy Regalon. She's the person in charge of the admissions process. Uh, to do the application, you need to send the necessary documentation to her, but also you can go to our uh, website and just click the button uh, apply now and it will go directly to the uh, application form that will lead you to uh, root and she will get in touch with you for sure. And that's it. Um, thank Thanks. you very much for your attention. And now we open the time for questions, any kind of question that you may have. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. We're on the chat, so yeah, there's no sign. Okay, well, yeah, if anybody has um, any questions, you can just write it through the chat. I'll take your questions now, as Anna is saying, yes. Okay, as we were saying, the presentation is uh, finished. If you have any question, just uh, ask by the live chat and we will answer you. Okay, I think we can take um, Stein no. Judah's question. Um, you're asking, is it mandatory to have a portfolio to apply as a geographer? I don't have that. No, actually we do have geographers in the program, so not necessarily a portfolio, but I mean just your CV and your cover letter 
that would be enough. We have um, had geographers very welcome to the program. I think your perspective is very valuable too. So yes, if you, um, it is not an issue. Um, I would say though, to everybody that is hearing to please apply now because there is a limited um, space, number, yeah. number of people and uh, we already have a lot of interest. So if, um, if you are interested, please do submit your papers and everything as soon as possible. So Stein, yeah, this is, there's no problem with that. Anybody else? And um, I was seeing that we had some technical problems at the beginning, so if you have any questions of the presentation that you didn't hear, I mean, this is what the online session is for, so feel free to ask. We don't mind um, <laughs> repeating. Yeah. So yes, if you have any questions about any of the first part of the presentation, which was basically what were the focus and the topics and the content of the program, well, we're happy to answer. Yeah, I guess we can get some, take some time. Mm -hmm. No questions. I guess we were very clear. We're very oh, clear. clear. <laughs> How accessible is the university to the NGOs network? Is it easy to apply to, for example, United Nations Human Settlements Program? Um, yes, um, we have internships with UNHCR. Um, actually, one of our students, if you look on the blog, there's an interview to him. Um, Nazir has been working for six months with UNHCR. Uh, we have a network that is very strong with NGOs that have been collaborating with us for the past seven years now in the program. But at, as Raquel was saying, um, you can also suggest other NGOs and uh, that happens every year. Um, we had never worked, for example, with FAO, and uh, now this mm -hmm. year we have a student that is very interested in food sovereignty, so we now have an agreement with them. So it is accessible, yes. Um, I think part of the strength of the program are the many years that it's been ongoing, and every year students always come with their new topic of interest, and, um, and this is, um, this is uh, quite feasible. Yes, it is. Um, answering Taroski. And UNHCR itself is our, our partner now in Barcelona too. I'm sure you're aware of the huge refugee crisis that is going on in Europe. So before we used to work with UNHCR abroad, but now UNHCR Spain is going to be part of our program as of this year. So yes, we're working very closely in the topics of refugee settlements and um, resettlements and integration basically in Barcelona and in Europe. Yeah, well, we're waiting for more questions. <laughs> um, I think the, the online, I think the, the PDF has been uploaded to of the program, so if, if you have any doubts, you can um, also look through the PDF of the program. There you have a little bit more um, this, uh, summary of what we've explained today. <laughs> Just as well as some of the collaborators, which are the NGOs and the institutions you can work with in your internship. So yeah, I think you, you already have it, right? This, um, this for sure, so you can download it too. No more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we've been very clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, well, if you do have any questions, you can get in touch with, um, with us through our networks too, or through our blog. I'm sure Ana Canizares, who's online right now, will be happy to answer any questions if you write to her online, through the blog or the Facebook, right? And if not, you know, um, you can also write to the University Children's Regalón, which is the person in charge of admissions. I do want to stress that it's important you apply as soon as possible because there are a limited amount of places left 
So, um, yes, I, I can't stress it enough. <laughs> Okay. Okay, well, it's been a pleasure to be with you, whoever is connected still, and um, we leave this session on so you can review it and look at the PowerPoint with a lot more time, and um, it's, uh, remember to always contact our communication officer or anybody, even in, uh, students of ours, if you're interested in knowing how the program is. And so That's goodbye it. from Barcelona. We hope Thank to see you, you here. Thank you for being there, and hope to see you. Hope to see year. you soon. Bye. Bye.